Pacific Northwest, Wikipedia article audio. The Pacific Northwest, sometimes referred to as Cascadia, is a geographic region in western North America bounded by the Pacific Ocean to the west and by the Cascade Mountain Range on the east. Though no agreed boundary exists, a common conception includes the U.S. states of Oregon and Washington and the Canadian province of British Columbia. Broader conceptions reach north into southeast Alaska and Yukon, south into northern California and east to the Continental Divide, thus including Idaho, western Montana, and western Wyoming. Narrower conceptions may be limited to the northwestern U.S. or to the coastal areas west of the Cascade and Coast Mountains. The variety of definitions can be attributed to partially overlapping commonalities of the region's history, culture, geography, society, and other factors. Definition History Indigenous Peoples Initial European Exploration Boundary Disputes Geology Geography Climate Ecorjuns Population List of largest cities by population in the Pacific Northwest Politics Economy Education Culture Environmentalism Music Cuisine Sports Video games Demographics Language National self-determination desires Spirituality and religion Notes and references the northwest coast is the coastal region of the Pacific Northwest and the Northwest Plateau and the Inland Empire in the United States is the Inland Region. The term Pacific Northwest should not be confused with the Northwest Territory or the Northwest Territories of Canada. The region's largest metropolitan areas are Greater Seattle, Washington, with 3.7 million people, Greater Vancouver, British Columbia, with 2.5 million people, and Greater Portland, Oregon, with 2.4 million people. A key aspect of the Pacific Northwest is the U.S.-Canada international border, which the United States and the United Kingdom established at a time when the region's inhabitants were composed mostly of indigenous peoples. The border in two sections along the 49th parallel south of British Columbia and the Alaska Panhandle west of northern British Columbia has had a powerful effect on the region. According to Canadian historian Ken Coates, the border has not merely influenced the Pacific Northwest rather, the region's history and character have been determined by the boundary. Definitions of the Pacific Northwest region vary and even Pacific Northwesterners do not agree on the exact boundary. A common conception of the Pacific Northwest includes the U.S. states of Oregon and Washington as well as the Canadian province of British Columbia. Broader definitions of the region have included the U.S. state of Alaska, 8 the Canadian territory of the Yukon, the northwestern portion of the state of California, and even areas reaching east to the Rocky Mountains. Definitions based on the historic Oregon country reach east to the Continental Divide, thus including nearly all of Idaho and parts of western Montana and western Wyoming. Sometimes the Pacific Northwest is defined as being the northwestern United States specifically, excluding Canada. Note that these types of definitions are often made by government agencies whose scope is limited to the United States. In addition to the conventional grouping of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and British Columbia, some definitions also include Southeast Alaska, Western Montana, 
the coast of Northern California, and a small part of northwestern Wyoming. The Pacific Northwest has been occupied by a diverse array of indigenous peoples for millennia. The Pacific Coast is seen by some scholars as a major coastal migration route in the settlement of the Americas by late Pleistocene peoples moving from Northeast Asia into the Americas. The coastal migration hypothesis has been bolstered by findings such as the report that the sediments in the Port Eliza Caves on Vancouver Island indicate the possibility of survivable climate as far back as 16 Ka in the area, while the continental ice sheets were nearing their maximum extent. Other evidence for human occupation dating back as much as 14,500 years ago is emerging from Paisley Caves in south-central Oregon. However, despite such research, the coastal migration hypothesis is still subject to considerable debate. Due in part to the richness of Pacific Northwest coast and river fisheries, some of the indigenous peoples developed complex sedentary societies while remaining hunter-gatherers. The Pacific Northwest Coast is one of the few places where politically complex hunter-gatherers evolved and survived to historic contacts, and therefore has been vital for anthropologists and archaeologists seeking to understand how complex hunter and gatherer societies function. When Europeans first arrived on the northwest coast, they found one of the world's most complex hunting and fishing societies, with large sedentary villages, large houses, systems of social rank and prestige, extensive trade networks, and many other factors more commonly associated with societies based on domesticated agriculture. In the interior of the Pacific Northwest, the indigenous peoples, at the time of European contact, had a diversity of cultures and societies. Some areas were home to mobile and egalitarian societies. Others, especially along major rivers such as the Columbia and Fraser, had very complex, affluent, sedentary societies rivaling those of the coast. In British Columbia and southeast Alaska, the Tlingit and Haida erected large and elaborately carved totem poles that have become iconic of Pacific Northwest artistic traditions. Throughout the Pacific Northwest, thousands of indigenous people live, and some continue to practice their rich cultural traditions, organizing their societies around cedar and salmon. In 1579 the British captain and erstwhile privateer Francis Drake sailed up the west coast of North America perhaps as far as Oregon before returning south to land and make ship repairs. At this landing site, probably near present-day San Francisco, Drake made a symbolic claim of the region for England, naming it New Albion, 1112 Juan de Fuca a Greek captain sailing for the crown of Spain, supposedly found the Strait of Juan de Fuca around 1592. The strait was named for him, but whether he discovered it or not has long been questioned. During the early 1740s, Imperial Russia sent the Dane Vitus Bering to the region. By the late 18th century and into the mid-19th century, Russian settlers had established several posts and communities on the northeast Pacific coast, eventually reaching as far south as Fort Ross, California. The Russian River was named after these settlements. In 1774 the Viceroy of New Spain sent Spanish navigator Juan Perez in the ship Santiago to the Pacific Northwest. Perez made landfall on Haida Gui on July 18, 1774. The northernmost latitude he reached was 54 degrees 40 minutes north. This was followed, in 1775, by another Spanish expedition, under the command of Bruno de Heceta and including Juan Perez and Juan Francisco de la Bodega y Cuadra as officers. 
On July 14, 1775, they landed on the Olympic Peninsula near the mouth of the Quinault River. On August 17, 1775, Heseta, returning south, sighted the mouth of the Columbia River and named it Bahia de la Asuncion. While Heseta sailed south, Quadra continued north in the expedition's second ship, the Sonora, reaching Alaska, at 59 degrees north. In 1778 English mariner Captain James Cook visited Nootka Sound on Vancouver Island and also voyaged as far as Prince William Sound. In 1779 a third Spanish expedition, under the command of Ignacio de Artega in the ship Princesa, and with Quadra as captain of the ship Favorite, sailed from Mexico to the coast of Alaska, reaching 61 degrees north. Two further Spanish expeditions, in 1788 and 1789, both under Esteban José Martínez and Gonzalo López de Haro, sailed to the Pacific Northwest. During the second expedition, they met the American Captain Robert Gray near Nootka Sound. Upon entering Nootka Sound, they found William Douglas and his ship the Iphigenia. Conflict led to the Nootka Crisis, which was resolved by agreements known as the Nootka Convention. In 1790 the Spanish sent three ships to Nootka Sound, under the command of Francisco de Eliza. After establishing a base at Nootka, Eliza sent out several exploration parties. Salvador Fidalgo was sent north to the Alaska coast. Manuel Camper, with Gonzalo López de Haro as pilot, explored the Strait of Juan de Fuca discovering the San Juan Islands and Admiralty Inlet in the process. Francisco de Eliza himself took the ship San Carlos into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. From a base at Port Discovery, his pilotos José María Narvaez and Juan Carrasco explored the San Juan Islands, Harrow Strait, Rosario Strait, and Bellingham Bay. In the process, they discovered the Strait of Georgia and explored it as far north as Texada Island. The expedition returned to Nootka Sound by August 1791. Alessandro Malaspina, sailing for Spain, explored and mapped the coast from Yakutat Bay to Prince William Sound in 1791, then sailed to Nootka Sound. Performing a scientific expedition in the manner of James Cook, Malaspina's scientists studied the Tlingit and Nuuchanulf peoples before returning to Mexico. Another Spanish explorer, Jacinto Camano, sailed the ship Aranzazu to Nootka Sound in May 1792. There he met Cuadra, who was in command of the Spanish settlement in Fort San Miguel. Quadra sent Camano north, to carefully explore the coast between Vancouver Island and Bucareli Bay, Alaska. Various Spanish maps, including Camano's, were given to George Vancouver in 1792, as the Spanish and British worked together to chart the complex coastline. From 1792 to 1794, George Vancouver charted the Pacific Northwest on behalf of Great Britain, including the Strait of Georgia, the bays and inlets of Puget Sound, and the Johnstone Strait Queen Charlotte Strait and much of the rest of the British Columbia coast and southeast Alaska shorelines. For him the city of Vancouver and Vancouver Island are named, as well as Vancouver, Washington. From Mexico, Malaspina dispatched the last Spanish exploration expedition in the Pacific Northwest, under Dionisio Alcala Galeano and K. Antonio Valdez aboard the schooners Sudil and Mexicana. They met Vancouver in the Strait of Georgia on June 21, 1792. 
Vancouver had explored Puget Sound just previously. The Spanish explorers knew of Admiralty Inlet and the unexplored region to the south, but they decided to sail north. They discovered and entered the Fraser River shortly before meeting Vancouver. After sharing maps and agreeing to cooperate, Galliano, Valdez, and Vancouver sailed north to Desolation Sound and the Discovery Islands, charting the coastline together. They passed through Johnstone Strait and Cordero Channel and returned to Nootka Sound. As a result, the Spanish explorers, who had set out from Nootka, became the first Europeans to circumnavigate Vancouver Island. Vancouver himself had entered the Strait of Juan de Fuca directly without going to Nootka first, so had not sailed completely around the island. In 1786 Jean-François de la Perouse, representing France, sailed to Haidegui after visiting Nootka Sound but any possible French claims to this region were lost when La Perouse and his men and journals were lost in a shipwreck near Australia. Upon encountering the Salish coastal tribes, either Perouse or someone in his crew remarked, what must astonish most is to see painting everywhere, everywhere sculpture, among a nation of hunters. Maritime fur trader Charles William Barclay also visited the area in the Imperial Eagle, a British ship falsely flying the flag of the Austrian Empire. American merchant sea captain Robert Gray traded along the coast and discovered the mouth of the Columbia River. Initial formal claims to the region were asserted by Spain in 1513 with explorer Núñez de Balboa, the first European to sight the Pacific Ocean from the Americas. Russian maritime fur trade activity, through the Russian America Company, extended from the farther side of the Pacific to Russian America. This prompted Spain to send expeditions north to assert Spanish ownership while Captain James Cook and subsequent expeditions by George Vancouver advanced British claims. As of the Nootka Conventions, the last in 1794, Spain gave up its exclusive a priori claims and agreed to share the region with the other powers, giving up its garrison at Nootka Sound in the process. The United States established a claim based on the discoveries of Robert Gray, the Lewis and Clark expedition, the construction of Fort Astoria, and the acquisition of Spanish claims given to the United States in the adams onis Treaty. From the 1810s until the 1840s, modern-day Washington, Oregon, Idaho and western Montana, along with most of British Columbia, were part of what the United States called the Oregon Country and Britain called the Columbia District. This region was jointly claimed by the United States and Great Britain after the Treaty of 1818, which established a CO dominion of interests in the region in lieu of a settlement. In 1840 American Charles Wilkes explored in the area. John McLaughlin chief factor of the Hudson's Bay Company, headquartered at Fort Vancouver, was the de facto local political authority for most of this time. This arrangement ended as U.S. settlement grew and President James K. Polk was elected on a platform of calling for annexation of the entire Oregon country and of Texas. After his election, supporters coined the famous slogan 5440 or fight, referring to 54 degrees 40 minutes north latitude the northward limit of the United States claim. After a war scare with the United Kingdom, the Oregon boundary dispute was settled in the 1846 Oregon Treaty, partitioning the region along the 49th parallel and resolving most but not all of the border disputes. The mainland territory north of the 49th parallel remained unincorporated until 1858, 
when a mass influx of Americans and others during the Fraser Canyon Gold Rush forced the hand of Colony of Vancouver Island's Governor James Douglas, who declared the mainland a crown colony. The two colonies were amalgamated in 1866 to cut costs, and joined the Dominion of Canada in 1871. The U.S. portion became the Oregon Territory in 1848. It was later subdivided into Oregon Territory and Washington Territory. These territories became the states of Oregon, Idaho, Washington, and parts of other western states. American expansionist pressure on British Columbia persisted after the colony became a province of Canada even though Americans living in the province did not harbor annexationist inclinations. The Fenian Brotherhood openly organized and drilled in Washington, particularly in the 1870s and the 1880s, though no cross-border attacks were experienced. During the Alaska boundary dispute, U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt threatened to invade and annex British Columbia if Britain would not yield on the question of the Yukon ports. In more recent times, during the so-called Salmon War of the 1990s, Washington Senator Slade Gordon called for the U.S. Navy to force the Inside Passage, even though it is not an official international waterway. Disputes between British Columbia and Alaska over the Dixon entrance of the Hecate Strait between Prince Rupert and Heidegui have not been resolved. The Northwest is still highly geologically active, with both active volcanoes and geologic faults. Active volcanoes in the region include Mount Garibaldi, Mount Baker, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Mount Jefferson, Mount Shasta, and Glacier Peak. The Pacific Northwest is a diverse geographic region, dominated by several mountain ranges, including the Coast Mountains, the Cascade Range, the Olympic Mountains, the Columbia Mountains, and the Rocky Mountains. The highest peak in the Pacific Northwest is Mount Rainier in the Washington Cascades, at 14,410 feet. Immediately inland from the Cascade Range are broad, generally dry plateaus. In the U.S., this region is known as the Columbia Plateau, while in British Columbia it is the Interior Plateau, also called the Fraser Plateau. The Columbia Plateau was the scene of massive Ice Age floods, and as a consequence, there are many coulees, canyons, and the channeled scablands. Much of the plateau, especially in eastern Washington, is irrigated farmland. The Columbia River cuts a deep and wide gorge around the rim of the Columbia Plateau and through the Cascade Range on its way to the Pacific Ocean. Because many areas have plentiful rainfall and mild summers, the Pacific Northwest has some of North America's most lush and extensive forests, which are extensively populated with Coast Douglas fir trees, the second tallest growing evergreen conifer on Earth. The region also contains specimens of the tallest trees on Earth, the Coast Redwoods, in southwestern Oregon, but the largest of these trees are located just south of the California border in northwestern California. Coastal forests in some areas are classified as temperate rainforest. Coastal features are defined by the interaction with the Pacific and the North American continent. The coastline of the Pacific Northwest is dotted by numerous fjords, bays, islands, and mountains. Some of these features include the Oregon coast, Burrard Inlet, Puget Sound, and the highly complex fjords of the British Columbia coast and southeast Alaska. The region has one of the world's longest fjord coastlines. The major cities of Vancouver, Portland, Seattle, and Tacoma all began as seaports supporting the logging, mining, 
and farming industries of the region but have developed into major technological and industrial centers, which benefit from their location on the Pacific Rim. If defined as Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest has four U.S. national parks, Crater Lake in Oregon, plus Olympic, Mount Rainier, and North Cascades in Washington. If a larger regional definition is used, then other U.S. national parks might be included, such as Redwood National and State Parks, Glacier Bay National Park, Wrangell St. Elias National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and parts of Glacier National Park and Yellowstone National Park. There are several Canadian national parks in the Pacific Northwest, including Pacific Rim National Park on the west coast of Vancouver Island, Mount Revelstoke National Park and Glacier National Park in the Selkirk Range alongside Rogers Pass. Kootenay National Park and Yoho National Park on the British Columbia flank of the Rockies, Guihanas National Park Reserve in Haida Gwaii, and the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve in the Strait of Georgia. There are numerous protected areas in British Columbia and in the United States. Other outstanding natural features include the Columbia River Gorge, Fraser Canyon, Mount St. Helens, Malaspina Glacier, and Hell's Canyon. The south-central coast mountains in British Columbia contain the five largest mid-latitude ice fields in the world. British Columbia, List of Colleges in British Columbia, List of Universities in British Columbia. Pacific Northwest Independence and Secessionist Movements, Cascadia, Jefferson, Lincoln, Northwest Territory Brother 12 ran a controversial commune in the Gulf Islands of British Columbia early in the 20th century, the emissaries of divine light are a notable presence in the region of 100 Mile House, British Columbia, and also have a large ashram on Kootenay Lake, northeast of Nelson, British Columbia, Gong Aji an internationally recognized spiritual teacher and disciple of Punjaji, lives in Ashland, Oregon, the followers of the Guru Rajanish, the Sannyasin S, established a center for their beliefs. And lifestyle near Antelope, Oregon, which included an ashram complex as well as, for a while, an attempted takeover of the local economy. The training school of the immortal being Ramtha is headquartered in Yelm, Washington. Eckhart Tolle, author of The Power of Now, lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. Neil Donald Walsh, author of Conversations with God, lives in Ashland, Oregon, where he runs a retreat center. Oregon's Willamette Valley has a large population of Russian old believers. The Pacific Northwest experiences a wide variety of climates. An oceanic climate occurs in most coastal areas, typically between the ocean and high mountain ranges. An alpine climate dominates in the high mountains. Semi-arid and arid climates are found east of the higher mountains, especially in rain shadow areas. The Harney Basin of Oregon is an example of arid climate in the Pacific Northwest. Humid continental climates occur inland on windward sides, in places such as Revelstoke, British Columbia. A subarctic climate can be found farther north, especially in Yukon and Alaska. Under the Koppen climate classification, a cool summer version of the dry summer Mediterranean designation, is assigned to many areas of the Pacific Northwest as far north as central Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands, including cities such as Victoria, British Columbia, Seattle, and Portland. These zones are not associated with a typical Mediterranean climate, and would be classified as temperate oceanic except dry summer patterns typical to the Pacific Northwest meet Copen's minimum CS thresholds. 
Other climate classification systems, such as True Artha, place these areas firmly in the oceanic zone. Much of the Pacific Northwest is forested. The Georgia Strait Puget Sound Basin is shared between British Columbia and Washington, and the Pacific Temperate Rainforests E. Corjun, which is the largest of the world's temperate rainforest ecozones in the system created by the World Wildlife Fund, stretches along the coast from Alaska to California. The dryland area inland from the Cascade Range and Coast Mountains is very different from the terrain and climate of the coastal area due to the rain shadow effect of the mountains, and comprises the Columbia, Fraser and Thompson plateaus and mountain ranges contained within them. The interior region's climates largely within eastern Washington, South-Central British Columbia, Eastern Oregon, and Southern Idaho are a northward extension of the Great Basin Desert, which spans the Great Basin farther south, although by their northern and eastern reaches, dryland and desert areas verge at the end of the Cascades and Coast Mountains rain shadows with the boreal forest and various alpine flora regimes characteristic of Eastern British Columbia, Northern Idaho, and Western. Montana roughly along a longitudinal line defined by the Idaho border with Washington and Oregon. Most of the population of the Pacific Northwest is concentrated in the Portland-Seattle-Vancouver corridor. This area is sometimes seen as a megacity. This megacity stretches along Interstate 5 in the states of Oregon and Washington and Highway 99 in the province of British Columbia. As of 2004, the combined populations of the Lower Mainland region, the Seattle metropolitan area and the Portland metropolitan area totaled around 8 million people. However, beyond the megacity with few exceptions, the PNW region is characterized by a relatively low-density population distribution. Some other regions of greater population density outside this corridor include the Okanagan Valley in the British Columbia interior and the Greater Spokane area. Large geographical areas may only have one mid-sized to small-sized city as a regional center with smaller cities and towns scattered around. Vast areas of the region may have little or no population at all largely due to the presence of extensive mountains and forests, and plateaus containing both extensive farm and range lands, much of which is protected from development in large parks and preserves, or by zoning use regulation related to traditional land use. For example, all cities within the portion of California included in the Pacific Northwest have populations less than 100,000 with that portion of the state containing millions of acres of national forests and parks. A major divide in political opinion separates the region's greatly more populated urban core and rural areas west of the mountains from its less populated rural areas to their east and north. The coastal areas especially in the cities of Vancouver, Victoria, Bellingham, Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia, Portland, Eugene, and Ashland are some of the most politically liberal parts of North America, regularly supporting left-wing political candidates and causes by significant majorities, while the interior and north tend to be more conservative and consistently support right-wing candidates and causes. It should be noted that the religious right has far less influence throughout the region than elsewhere in the U.S., and that certain areas of the B.C. interior, particularly the West Kootenay and some areas of Vancouver Island and the B.C. coast, have long histories of labor, environmental and social activism. The urban core in addition to certain rural districts is known for supporting liberal political views perceived as controversial in much of the rest of North America. Many jurisdictions have relatively liberal abortion laws, gender equality laws, legal cannabis, and strong LGBT rights, especially British Columbia, where gay marriage has been legal since 2003, 
Washington, where it has been legal since 2012, and Oregon, where same-sex marriage was made legal in May 2014. Oregon was the first U.S. state to legalize physician-assisted suicide, with the Death with Dignity Act of 1994. Washington state was the second when I-1000 passed in 2008. Colegio Cesar Chavez, the first fully accredited Hispanic college in the U.S., was founded in Mount Angel, Oregon in 1973. In 1986 King County, Washington, which contains Seattle, renamed itself in honor of Martin Luther King. These areas, especially around Puget Sound, have a long history of political radicalism. The radical labor organizers called Wobblies were particularly strong there in the mines, lumber camps, and shipyards. A number of anarchist communes sprung up there in the early 20th century. Seattle is one of a handful of major cities in North America in which the populace engaged in a general strike and was the first major American city to elect a woman mayor, Bertha Knight Lawns. Socialist beliefs were once widespread and the region has had a number of socialist elected officials. So great was its influence that the U.S. Postmaster General, James Farley, jokingly toasted the 47 states of the Union, and the Soviet of Washington, at a gala dinner in 1936. The region also has a long history of starting cooperative and communal businesses and organizations, including Group Health, REI. Puget Consumers Co-ops and numerous granges and mutual aid societies. It also has a long history of publicly owned power and utilities, with many of the region's cities owning their own public utilities. In British Columbia, credit unions are common and popular cooperatively owned financial institutions. East of the Cascades, in eastern Washington and eastern Oregon, the population is much more conservative. The eastern portions of Washington and especially Oregon, due to their low populations, do not generally have enough voting power to be competitive at the state level, and thus the governorships and U.S. Senate seats of both Oregon and Washington are usually held by the Democrats. Conservatism in the eastern part of the Pacific Northwest tends to be distrustful of federal government interference and strongly protective of gun rights. Aluminum smelting was once an important part of the region's economy due to the abundance of once cheap hydroelectric power. Hydroelectric power generated by the hydroelectric dams on the Columbia River powered at least 10 aluminum smelters during the mid 20th century. By the end of World War II these smelters were producing over a third of the United States aluminum. Production rose during the 1950s and 1960s, then declined. By the first decade of the 21st century the aluminum industry in the Pacific Northwest was essentially defunct. The Alkin smelter at Kitimat continues in operation and is fed by the diversion of the Nachaco River to a powerhouse on the coast at Kemano, near Kitimat. The region as a whole, but especially several specific areas are concentrated high-tech areas, Seattle eastern suburbs, the Portland Silicon Forest area, and Vancouver, B.C. These areas are also leading creative class economic drivers, feeding thriving cultural sectors, and include many knowledge workers and numerous international advertising, media, and design firms present. Colleges and Universities in the Pacific Northwest Although the dominant culture in the Pacific Northwest today is Anglo-American, Anglo-Canadian, and Scandinavian-American, there is significant Mexican and Chinese influence. 23% of Vancouver, BC is Chinese, 
and 50% of residents of the city of Vancouver do not speak English as their first language. Parts of Oregon and Washington are bilingual in both English and Spanish, and Native American culture is strong throughout the Pacific Northwest. The hippie movement also began in California and the Pacific Northwest. There have been proposals for certain parts of the Pacific Northwest becoming its own country because of the shared e Korjun and culture, the most well-known being Cascadia. However, the region is strongly divided by the international border, and this division has grown more rather than less powerful over the 20th century. Carl Abbott argues that, given the twin factors of limited economic integration vis-a-vis -vis NAFTA, and cultural similarities, he views the major cities as going their separate ways as east-west gateways of commerce, competing with each other, rather than forming north-south connectors of a tentative mega-region. Cannabis use is relatively popular, especially around Vancouver, BC, Bellingham, Seattle, Olympia, Spokane, Portland, and Eugene. Several of these jurisdictions have made arrests for cannabis a low enforcement priority. Medical marijuana is legal in British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon, as well as in Alaska, though that state prohibits its sale and has no licensed dispensaries, and in the Yukon. Although less than 50 of the territory's residents are licensed to use medical marijuana and no legal dispensaries operate within its borders. As of December 6, 2012, possession of less than an ounce of marijuana for recreational use by persons over 21 years of age became legal in Washington state as a result of State Ballot Measure Initiative 502 which was approved by the state's voters on November 6, 2012, by a 10-point margin. As of July 1, 2015, recreational marijuana use was legalized in Oregon as well. Environmentalism is prominent throughout the region, especially west of the Cascades. Environmentally conscious services such as recycling and public transportation are widespread, most notably in the more populous areas. A 2007 statistical analysis ranked the 50 greenest cities in the United States, placing Portland, Oregon first, Eugene, Oregon fifth, and Seattle, Washington eighth. The region as a whole is also known for its bicycle culture as an alternative form of transportation. Portland is considered by Forbes Traveler to be the second most bicycle friendly city in the world. Portland is also the hub of American bicycle manufacturing, as a whole, it generated over $68 million in revenue in 2007 alone. Seattle, Washington has also garnered a reputation for its contributions to public transportation with the Puget Sound Transit System, including an underground light rail system and a 38.9% worker commute rate as of 2011. Politically, the Pacific Northwest is actively involved in environmental efforts. The international organization Greenpeace was born in Vancouver in 1970 as part of a large public opposition movement in British Columbia to U.S. nuclear weapons testing on Amchitka Island in the Aleutians. Liberal and conservative Northwesterners, such as former U.S. Senator Slade Gordon and moderate Democrats like former Speaker of the House Tom Foley, have been prominent in the development of conservative approaches to environmental protection. Seattle in particular is also home to a large number of publications and institutions concerned with the environment and sustainability, including both World Changing and Grist.org, the U.S.'s two largest online green magazines. The Pacific Northwest is also noted for a large number of gardening clubs with Victoria having an annual flower count in February. 
the direct intervention Oceanic Protection Group known as the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society has its headquarters in Friday Harbour on San Juan Island. In British Columbia environmentalist fought to protect clay aquat sound in the 1980s and 1990s. More recently the province has agreed to environmental protections in the Great Bear Rainforest. The modern era Pacific Northwest is known for indie music, especially grunge, alternative rock, and metal as well as historically strong folk music and world music traditions. Many are associated with the independent label Sub Pop. Lately the region has also gained notice for its hip-hop music in the Pacific Northwest. KEXB.org is a popular and nationally noted Seattle-based public indie music radio station. Among the area's largest music festivals are the Merritt Mountain Music Festival, the Vancouver Folk Music Festival, the Sasquatch Music Festival in George, Washington, Seattle's Bumbershoot, and Portland's Music Fest NW. Portland's Waterfront Blues Festival is the largest blues-based festival west of the Mississippi River. Local artists who became groundbreaking rock bands of their times include Jimi Hendrix, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Foo Fighters, and Sleater Kinney, but the history of Northwest rock can be traced back to the mid-1950s and 1960s with such bands such as the Sonics, the Ventures, the Kingsmen, and Paul Revere and the Raiders. Cuisine of the area include wild salmon, huckleberries, a wide variety of Asian cuisines, and locally produced fruits, vegetables, and cheeses. Chinese Japanese, Korean, Italian, Mexican, and Greek cuisines are prevalent throughout the Northwest, and reflect the historically strong presence of those communities in the restaurant industry there. Teriyaki restaurants are particularly common in the Seattle area. Eateries featuring Persian, Asian fusion, and Indo-Canadian cuisines are common throughout in Greater Vancouver as are ethnic specialty restaurants of all kinds. Ethnic staples ranging from frozen pierogies to frozen dim sum are common in most supermarkets in these communities. Locally made craft beers and premium wines from various wine growing area within the region are popular with drinkers and diners. Northern latitude and coastal breezes create a climate that attracts international recognition for its mostly family-owned and operated vineyards and wineries. Portland is a major microbrewery center in America, and is home to the Widmer Brothers Brewery. Skiing, snowboarding, cycling, mountaineering, hiking, camping, hunting, fishing, boating and water sports are popular outdoor activities. Vancouver, Seattle, Tacoma, Portland and Spokane are home to numerous professional sports teams, including the BC Lions, Vancouver Canucks, Vancouver Canadians, Vancouver Whitecaps FC, Vancouver Stealth, Seattle Mariners, Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Sounders FC, Seattle Rain FC, Seattle Storm, Everett Aquasox, Tacoma Rainiers, Portland Trail Blazers, Portland Timbers, Portland Thorns FC, Hillsboro Hops, Salem Kaiser Volcanoes, Eugene Emeralds, and Spokane Indians. The region's three USSF Division I Major League Soccer teams the Whitecaps FC, Sounders FC, and Timbers play to sold-out crowds and compete annually for the Cascadia Cup. The USSF Division IV USL Premier Development League also has seven teams in the Northwest Division. In addition to all this the region has its own representative non-FIFA team which joined the N.F board officially in 2013 to participate in friendlies and the Viva World Cup. 
Vancouver is home to a four-team league for Australian football, the British Columbia Australian Football League, one of several Canadian Australian football leagues. Hockey is the most popular spectator sport in British Columbia, with the Vancouver Canucks of the NHL being the most popular professional team although the Vancouver Giants of the Western Hockey League also have a very strong following. The CFL's BC Lions are considered Vancouver's second most popular team, although soccer and the Whitecaps FC have been rising in popularity in recent years. Hockey is slowly gaining popularity south of the border too, with the Portland Winter Hawks. Followers of the Portland Trail Blazers basketball team refer to themselves as the sixth man and Blazer Mania refers to the extraordinary dedication fans have shown the team. In Seattle many fans are still upset over the move of the Seattle Supersonics while supporters of the Seattle Seahawks football team are known officially as the twelfth man. And the supporter groups of the three MLS teams of the region are renowned for their passion and dedication to their teams. The only NASCAR track in the Seattle-Portland region is Evergreen Speedway, the largest short track west of the Mississippi River and has hosted many of the marquee drivers of NASCAR. With three oval tracks, a figure-eight track and various road course variants, Evergreen Speedway operates year-round events. Evergreen Speedway hosts the NASCAR Well and All-American Series, the NASCAR KNN Pro Series West, National Figure 8 Events, USAC, SCCA, plus Touring Groups and Formula Drift. In Washington and Oregon, many residents passionately follow college athletics. In Washington, the major NCAA Division I college athletic programs are the University of Washington Huskies and the Washington State Cougars. In Oregon the major programs are the University of Oregon Ducks and the Oregon State Beavers. All four of these programs are members of the Pac-12 Conference and compete with each other in a variety of sports. These universities are all considered rivals of one another particularly in college football. The most significant of these rivalries are the Oregon-Washington game, the Washington-Washington State game, a.k.a. the Apple Cup and the Oregon-Oregon State game a.k.a. the Civil War. As in professional sports, college fans in the Pacific Northwest are known for being particularly passionate about their teams. Both Husky Stadium and Autzen Stadium have gained reputations for deafening noise, despite not being the largest of college football venues. Husky Stadium currently holds the record for the loudest crowd noise in NCAA history at 130 decibels, while Autzen Stadium currently holds the record for the fourth at 127 decibels. Seattle is considered by Digital Trends magazine to be the top gaming city in America, a possible indicator of markedly higher rates of video game usage throughout the Pacific Northwest in general. Most major companies are headquartered in the Seattle metropolitan area, including Microsoft, Nintendo of America, Valve Corporation, Bungie, and Sony Computer Entertainment's subsidiary Sucker Punch Productions. Microsoft and Nintendo of America also have Canadian branches headquartered in Vancouver Microsoft Canada and Nintendo of Canada respectively, while Electronic Arts Canada is located in the same city. In the U.S. side of the region, Latinos make up a large portion of the agricultural labor force east of the Cascade Range, and are an increasing presence in the general labor force west of the Cascades. African Americans are less numerous in the Pacific Northwest, however, the overall African American population has been growing in other smaller urban areas throughout the region, such as Spokane and Eugene.
African Americans tend to concentrate in western urban areas such as Tacoma, South Seattle, and Portland. Nonetheless, blacks have a very large presence in Tacoma's hilltop and South Tacoma neighborhoods, Seattle's Central District and Rainier Valley neighborhoods, and in Portland's Northeast Quadrant. There are growing numbers in Vancouver as well, particularly Africans. Jamaicans and blacks from the United States. As of the first decade of the 21st century, many Asians were moving out and into middle class suburbs, though some would voice concern about preserving historical communities, particularly in Vancouver. British Columbia has the largest Asian presence per capita in North America with 10% of the population being of Chinese ancestry and also large numbers of South Asians, Filipinos, and others. The Asian presence in the U.S. section of the Pacific Northwest is comparably smaller, with all Asian groups together comprising about 8% of Washington state's population, and smaller figures in Oregon and Idaho. This is due to immigration quotas at the federal level, as while Canada has one-tenth the population of the United States, it takes in one-quarter as many immigrants. African Americans have held the positions of mayor in Seattle and Spokane, King County Executive, while the state of Washington elected a Chinese-American governor during the 1990s, Gary Locke. British Columbians of many ethnicities are prominent in all levels of politics and government, and the province has a number of firsts in Canadian political history, including the first non-white premier, Ajayil Dosanya, and the first Asian lieutenant governor, the Han. David Lamb The lieutenant governor from 2007 to 2012, Stephen Point, was of Aboriginal origin, being Stowe L. from the Chilliwack area. The leader of the opposition party from 2005 to 2011, the NDP, was Carol James, of partial Métis origin. Colonial Governor James Douglas was himself mulatto of Guyanese extraction and his wife was of Cree origin. On LGBT representation in government, Oregon has been a national leader. At the time of his election to the office of Portland mayor in 2008, Sam Adams was the first openly gay individual to represent a city of Portland's size in the United States. In Silverton, Oregon, the same year, Stu Rasmussen was elected the first transgender mayor in U.S. history. The first two LGBT state Supreme Court justices in the country both sit on the Oregon Supreme Court. Governor of Oregon Kate Brown is the highest-ranking openly bisexual politician in the United States. Most Americans and Canadians consider the Pacific Northwest English accent neutral, though indistinct from the Midwestern dialects that some believe typify American speech. It possesses the low back vowel merger, or the cot cot merger. Canadian raising occurs in British Columbia and some speakers in Washington to a similar degree as it does in southern Ontario, but weaker than other parts of Canada. The California vowel shift also affects speech in the region. Chinook jargon was a pidgin or trade language established among indigenous inhabitants of the region. After contact with Europeans, French, English, and Cree words entered the language, and eventually Chinook became the lingua franca for as many as 250,000 people along the Pacific Slope from Alaska to Oregon. Chinook jargon reached its height of usage in the 19th century though remained common in resource and wilderness areas particularly but not exclusively by Native Americans and Canadian First Nations people, well into the 20th century. Today its influence is felt mostly in place names and a handful of localized slang terms, particularly the word skookum, which remains hallmark of people raised in the region. 
Besides English and indigenous languages, Chinese has been common since the gold rushes of the mid-19th century, most particularly in British Columbia. Since the 1980s the Tuashan, a U dialect predominant in the area, has been replaced by mainstream Cantonese and by Mandarin because of large-scale immigration from Asia. Punjabi is also common in Vancouver, which has very large Sikh communities from India. Spanish is also spoken in parts of Oregon and Washington by Mexicans, both recent immigrants and long-standing communities. Among the fiercely independent and frontier nature of the former Oregon country and now western part of the United States, are a desire of many Pacific Northwesterners to improve upon their form of democracy by further subdividing the region into socio-political or bioregion defined nation-states. Some desires are transnational and autonomous of the United States while others are in the hope of gaining additional representational control in particular regions of the Northwest. Among these fluidly changing geographical boundaries and areas sought by a segment of the population of the Northwest are the following. The Pacific Northwest has the lowest rate of church attendance in the United States and consistently reports the highest percentage of atheism, this is most pronounced on the part of the region west of the Cascades. A recent study indicates that one quarter of those in Washington and Oregon believe in no religion. Similarly, according to the 2011 National Household Survey, 44% of British Columbia residents reported no religion. Religion plays a smaller part in Pacific Northwest politics than in the rest of the United States. The religious right has considerably less political influence than in other regions. Political conservatives in the Pacific Northwest tend to identify more strongly with free market libertarian values than they do with more religious social conservatives. That said, three of the four major international charities in the region are religious in nature, Northwest Medical Teams International, World Concern, World Vision International, and Mercy Corps. This is part of a long tradition of activist religion. The Skid Road Group, a shelter offering soup and sermons to the unemployed and recovering alcoholics, was launched in Vancouver, with the Salvation Army having deep roots in the Gastown district, dating back to the era of the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway and attained prominence in the same centres during the Klondike Gold Rush. The region is also known as a magnet for a wide range of philosophical and spiritual belief systems. Eastern spiritual beliefs have been adopted by an unusually large number of people, and Tibetan Buddhism in particular has a strong local following. The Northwest Tibetan Cultural Association, claimed to be the largest organization of its kind in the world, was founded in Portland in 1993. The region is home to many unique Christian communities, ranging from the Dukabors to the Mennonites. The Mennonite Central Committee Supportive Care Services is based in Abbotsford, BC. The Mennonite Central Committee and the Mennonite Disaster Service enjoy a heavy rate of enlistment and donations from the strong Mennonite community in British Columbia's Fraser Valley. The Dukabors, whose church is the Union of Spiritual Communities of Christ, are a Russian Anabaptist sect whose migration to Canada was aided by Count Leo Tolstoy and who are today focused in the West Kootenay and boundary regions of southeastern British Columbia. Their history in Canada includes resistance to state education and industrial development. Also, within the region there is a fairly strong representation of Orthodox churches, as well as the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Religious sees that are based in the Pacific Northwest include the Roman Catholic ecclesiastical provinces of Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver, Province 8 of the Episcopal Church in the United States of America, 
the Anglican ecclesiastical province of British Columbia and the Yukon, and the suffragan dioceses that make up those provinces. Yogic teachings, Sufism, tribal and ancient beliefs and other philosophies are widely studied and appreciated in the region. The lower mainland of British Columbia has a very large Sikh community. Oregon has a considerable Quaker population. There has been major growth in Chinese Buddhist temples since the increase in immigration from East Asia in the 1980s, especially in Vancouver. Also in Vancouver, there is a small Hindu population, a number of Parsi, and an emerging Muslim especially the 11,000 strong Ismaili population from South Asia, the Middle East, Africa, the Balkans, Southeast Asia, and elsewhere. Some people in the area also embrace alternative religion, such as New Age spirituality and neo-paganism. A new thought church called Living Enrichment Center with 4,000 members was located in Wilsonville, Oregon from 1992 to 2004.